Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Elisa Keaton, the founder of this ministry called Revelation Wellness, the author of that book, The Wellness Revelation. Thank you for letting me pop into your Facebook feed today. Really passionate, excited to talk to you about this. Um, this is going to take humility on all of our parts. So if you're interested in having healthy relationship with your daughter, if you have a daughter, if you are a daughter, <laughs> how about that? If you're a woman, you fall into this category. You need to hear these words today because not only were these, will these words be healing for you, but they will bring healing, wholeness, restoration, joy, hope, and peace into your home. Because I know that we are living in some uh, very exciting times. These aren't terrible times. I just want to say that. Hi, as you're coming in. These aren't terrible times. These are exciting times. And there's, there's um, confusion that happens. And your heart is good. So hear me. If you can hear me and you have a daughter and you're a mom, your heart is good. We just got done celebrating Mother's Day, right? And, and it's a good day. You're not a perfect mom. I'm not a perfect mom. But I know that I know this. Just as I've said, no kid is born and grows up and says, one day I want to be a meth addict. Um, nobody says that. So does a mom have a child and say, I really hope I mess this child up. <laughs> right? No one says that. It's your deepest desire that, that they would have a well and live a full life. And so we're going to talk about that today. And um, if you don't know who we are, Revelation Wellness, we are the holistic ministry of the gospel. We use fitness as a tool to spread the gospel message. The gospel is good news. If you are burned out, tired, you're exhausted by your own life, you trying to find, you know, you. Hi. Yes, Kelly. Um, you're trying to just, you're just, you go, you got a lot of junk or history. You know you want to live a life that is maybe more than what you're living for now. You're not alone. I think that's everyone's honest desire. How do we make that happen? Well, we, we can make it happen ourselves, void of a God who made us, but those ways lead to some sort of sacrifice, loss, and destruction that eventually is a very addictive life. We were called and made to worship God and to be in relationship with a God who created us. So I'm having a conversation here today with anyone who wants to raise their hand and say, okay, I believe there's a God. Like this all just didn't happen by accident. And that there's this entity inside of you. There's a reason why you hunger for a love that never ends and a beauty that never fades and a, a life that doesn't hurt because you were made for that. And so what we do here in this ministry is we bring all the desires of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, all the things that are going on inside of you, inside of this container of your body. We get really honest with it. We allow ourselves to feel what we feel and know what we know. So we're not afraid of what we feel, the story we've been through. We have to, nothing changes unless we accept what is. So we have to come into an awareness of what is. And so we get to do that. So you, some call it mindfulness. I call it, I call it wholeheartedness. We're going to live wholehearted here. So that is what we do. If you want to learn more about us, go over to revelationwellness.org. And please, actually, if this is your first time and if this message strikes a chord with you today, hi, as you're coming in, thanks for sharing. Platoon 20 in the house. Awesome. If this is your first time here and this message strikes a chord with you, please go to our website and download our free seven-day detox. Please, please. It will help. It will actually help you detox so that this message, you can do things a whole new way. If you are a mother of a daughter, I'm going to talk specifically to the females today, or if you are a daughter, this is the do-over we get to do. Uh, if you want more than that, get that book, The Wellness Revelation. This is a holistic message of living a life, losing what weighs you down, not necessarily in pounds that can be measured, but what weighs you down so you can love God, yourself, and others because there's stuff in us and we want to get it out. So that is what we get to do here, and I'm excited about this message today. So let me just tell you, let me tell you um, where this message came from. Okay. First of all, before I get going, um, yes, you need, you do need to get that book. Please go get that book. Get out a notebook. If you got, if you're anywhere that you can be seated, sit down. Cause I'm going to ask you to participate a little bit today. Okay. If you can, if you can't come back and watch this 
and I will make this a podcast. So thanks for those who are listening on podcast. Get a pen and paper out. I need you to feel what you feel and know what you know and write it down because we got to see it in black and white, okay? So we're going to participate a little bit today. I'm going to try and do this in 20, 30 minutes. So I'm going to move fast. So, so pause if you need to. If you are here on Facebook, I would love to know where you are. I always come back and I'm just always thrilled to see how we reach all parts of the world. That is so crazy and I'm so grateful that we get to do that. All right. So this uh, teaching today, I said um, this was, I titled it Attention Mamas, (laughs) How to Help Your Daughter Live Healthy, Whole, and Free right? Because like I said at the beginning, no parent has a baby and thinks how I would really like to mess this child up. Amen. Nobody thinks that because your heart is good. It's pointed towards true north, but life comes at us and we've had things done to us. The definition of sin is getting a legitimate need met in an illegitimate way. And so that's how I participated and with how others do it against me. So we all come into this world just getting banged up and bruised in a fallen world. So we can sit around and lick our wounds and blame people and make everyone else the issue. It just doesn't get any better there. Or we can awaken to the fight. It won't be fair. The fight is never fair. So everyone just kill your, just die to fair. It doesn't exist. It won't be fair, but there is a fight and you're made for a good fight. And that is to come alive. And to find out how we can actually take the things that have been done against us and use them for good. That's vengeance. That's when we are really playing the freedom game. And that's what I'm excited about. So as mothers, we all have a story. You have a daughter and they're also encountering a story too. So this podcast today got really, it got my heart. I am a mother of a daughter. I have a 14 year old daughter. Her name is Sophia. We call her Sophia the Brave. Even if she's not, I just call her that. I'm just declaring, it's who you are, Sophia. You are the brave. And she doesn't fully believe that yet, but I'm declaring it's who you are. You're made wise. You're made smart. I'm always, I see the goodness in here. And I also know that I participate in tearing her down in ways because of my own brokenness. Okay? So I have a heart for this because I was raised as a daughter who had a mom who did her very best but she too was hurt by a mother who had addictions and was not living. I'm a, a godly life. My parents gave me the gift of salvation, the gift of understand, of knowing Jesus. I didn't really understand him, like kind of knowing, but that, nothing more than that. So I guess technically I'm second generation Christian, second, because my parents were the first to, to really come and understand like, oh, Jesus, okay. Other than that, we had a religious background. But I also didn't see any change in my life. So I'm first generation, I'm gonna get in the fight. I'm not gonna blame anybody. I'm gonna get freedom out of this thing. I'm not just gonna have a faith that I live by by words. I want to see action. I want this to, it's either true or it's not. And I'm, I'm banking it all on it's true. And I'm gonna get in and dig, and dig and dig until there's no more to be dug. And so for me, I have a whole story. And when it comes to daughters, I I want a different story for my daughter. Amen. Can I get in the Facebook feed, anyone, a daughter? And you just throw up some hearts like, God, I want a different story for my daughter. I want a different story. Now hear me when I say, you might not even be thinking that right now. You might just be like, well, I just want my daughter to be happy. Okay, let's start there. That's great. There is no parent that is not like completely taken captive by evil that would not say, I want my kid to be happy. Okay, let's talk about that today. But this body story, this thing and living in a, as a world, as a female, there are some serious pressures on our children today, on our daughters. There's an assignment against their beauty. And remember that women, we hold beauty. We have the beauty card. Amen. Um, men don't, men have a, they have a different kind of card that their strength, their power, they're, they're, they're strong. They have an emotional, you know, lot tend to be a less emotionally wired us, but that's a great thing. They tend to think more, less attached to their emotions. That's a great thing. Celebrate the design. It's not a mistake to be corrected. It's a mystery to be discovered with our men. Just that they are God bearing people as well as we are, but our daughters, we um, are this very complex people. 
So today there was a post that went up in our, in our instructor. So we train instructors. If you're interested, Platoon 20 is enrolling right now. We train people, basically they're sons and daughters, uh, men and women that learn to be sons and daughters of God that then go home after they go through training to figure out, hey, this whole life, this whole, this whole part of me is telling a story and I'm going to listen to God and go home and minister to my family, my community in a holistic way. It really isn't about the fitness. And so one of our instructors posted back there today and she said, hey, you guys, I need some help. A 14-year-old girl, 14, that made me listen because that's my daughter's age, has come to her and asked if she could work one-on-one -on -one with her. For um, The 14-year-old the, the uh, girl is aware that she is hating her body, has issues with food. You know, there's some, it's not healthy. Like, hey, awesome. She was at least able to say, would you help me? And so the gal said, y yes, but now in working with her, she's finding out that there's things that her mom is saying or has said, like right now the mom is suggesting that, hey, what about me? Try Weight Watchers. Like we got to get you on Weight Watchers and kind of making these very common suggestions. So hear me when I say, that mom has a good heart. Uh, and these are suggestions that, that are out there. It's not like the mom is saying, I really would like my daughter to have an eating disorder. Come on, come on, right? The, the mom's saying, how can I help? Okay, so that's a physical solution to a physical problem. Let's count some calories. Let's get you on a regimen. And hear me when I say there's nothing wrong with that. There are times, but First of all, let's step back at listen, and we can see that dynamic. So I just want to ask, were any of you raised in that type of household where you felt like your mom meant well? well I'm just going to stay in the female relationship. Your mom meant well, but how she went about well did not sit well with you. Okay? That would, that would be me all day. My mom meant well, but how she went about to try and get me well uh, didn't sit well. <laughs> It actually made me rage a little bit more. It made me want to kick back more. I, two things tend to happen. We get big, we get rebellious, and we go, I'll figure it out myself. Or we get despondent and depressed and shame-filled and like, I can never add up. Let me try again, let me try again, right? We either get big or get small when really there's, there's um, it was a desire of a mom to help. Okay, so we can see this is why the story has to be bigger than just weight loss. So when she posted that, I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, I felt really passionate about first of all, and she just kind of saying, what can I do? What can I do to help the mom? And kind of one of the first things I said is, uh, why not maybe ask the daughter to share one of the Revelation Wellness podcasts? Because we hear, we know biblically that our children will teach us. Our child, the heart of heart, the children will teach the parents. So my child is here to teach me something if I have the ears to hear. So that was just a simple suggestion, but this got me thinking more of like, okay, moms, we just have to drop the pin on us. We got, we got to get clear. We got to stop with the tinkering of what we think we can do to help. And we got to put the oxygen mask on our face. The plane's going down, put it on your face and let's get clear about what's going on here. Let's step back so that you know the fight you're fighting. Fight the right fight. We don't fight flesh and blood. We don't fight, we fight principalities of darkness. And listen, I get it. We get it that we don't want, nobody wants their kid, and I'm gonna go real, I'm gonna cut it straight here. Nobody wants their child to be ostracized, cast out, put, and we know we're living in a world right now that says if you don't fit a certain look or style, or, you know, if you don't fit in, you're out. And we do everything. We want our kids to fit in so hard. We, we don't want them to hurt. So we create all these, well, what, maybe this, maybe this, maybe this, right? And what we can be doing if we're, is it coming from a place of fear? That's always a drop it, drop it. If it's coming from a place of fear, you got to stop the moving train. Because if, you're, if your real desires, you're afraid for your child and you're afraid that they'll be outcast, you're afraid that they won't fit in, <laughs> right? Then we will just put more fire, more fuel on the fire rather than what they need is, is love. What we need is love. What we need to remember is God is love. So... This restoring our relationship with our daughters and speaking to them and coming into relationship with them in a way that will build them up instead of tearing them down, even though we mean well, uh, can be done. 
We're going to need a lot of repentance in our life because we're not going to get it right. And so repentance is to be able to go to your daughter and say, man, I was afraid. I said this because I'm afraid. This is mommy stuff. Mommy's afraid that you're going to hurt like I hurt. Mommy. Okay, so let's go biblically. James 4, 1. Uh, here's what we're made for. We're made for relationship with our, with ev- we're made for relationship, period, with all people. All people. But we know that sin comes in and separates. It severs relationship between us and God. And if my relationship with me and God is severed, then it's going to be really hard for me to have relationship with others who are made in God's image. It's like I'm beating the air. So my relationship with God is primary. And then second is with people. Now, the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to cut that lifeline off between you and people and and God. So he's constantly using pain, hurt, fear, shame, guilt, all the lower level thinking of energy that we have, our limbic brain thinking, listen to the podcast to learn more on brain health, all our story, all our pain. If he can just stay there, then we will continue to add fuel to the fire instead of let me renew my mind. Okay, so we're made for relationship. James 4, 1 says, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that the passions or desires that are at war within you? So mama, if you have a strained relationship with your daughter right now, and you know, if your daughter doesn't feel safe coming to you, if your daughter um, is, you're kind of like, I I feel her moving away from me. Well, for one, pray, (laughs) pray, just pray. And then second, press in. You might get rejected. You might not, but you've got press in once you have had yourself cleared out a bit. You've got to get clear about the desires within you that are causing quarrels among you. So I go back to this story of this little girl. Her mom really wants her well. Amen? This mom wants her daughter to live well. And she's suggesting some things. But what desire is really going on and where's the motive? What is the mom afraid of? Because if fear is getting involved, then we're going to have a problem. (laughs) All right, so here's where. Here's here's where we're going to exercise this. Ready? We're going to have fun. This is going to be really cool. So Holy Spirit, come and speak to us. God living in us, talk to us, reason us into a place of shalom. God, speak. Okay, I want to ask you this question. So if we know that it's desires that war within each of us cause the quarrels among us, they cause the separation, the division, the divorce, right? It's my own personal battle within me. Well, moms, especially moms of young ones, we can turn the battle around. We can fight the right fight. Instead of fighting each other, we fight the enemy who's trying to come and shame and kill and steal and destroy this holy and whole relationship we have with our daughter, who's really our sister, which is kind of strange, right? We're mentoring them. We're bringing them up. Okay, so the first thing I want to ask, as a mom of a daughter, what would you say your daughter desires? Because first thing we need to do, we often go, well, let me talk about my desires. I say before we talk about our desires, let's do what Jesus says. He goes, put your put yourself in the other person's shoes for a minute. That's called empathy. And the way up to the brain where we can reason past our fear, shame, guilt, pain, hurt, self-protection, self, all the, all the destructive self-thoughts, we have to only get a higher thought through empathy. So go there first. You've got to be able to think, what is the other person feeling? What is the other person thinking? What is the other person wanting? So mamas, ask yourself, what's my daughter desire? What does she desire? I'm going to leave a little bit of space here in Facebook land. Write some things down. Would you guys please, what are some of the things that our daughters desire? Okay, financial freedom from debt. Stephanie must have an older one. That's great. That's right. When my daughter gets older, I want her to be able to not have to fear money or fear being poor. Yep. Come on, Facebook. What other things do our daughters, what do our daughters, let's, let's, 14, take yourself back to a 14-year-old daughter. When you were 14, what did you want? Thank you. Cindy, to be accepted by others. Yep. Uh-huh. Love. 
to belong, love and acceptance. Thank you. El, yeah, Elisa, acceptance, approval. Look at that. Where are we seeing it? Independence to be seen. Susie Phelps, approval of peers. You got it. Does he feel like she fits in? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 We got it. We're hitting it. You guys see it? Okay, good. I, I wrote these things down. First thing to belong that they know they belong. And I've said uh, it was um, Tom, oh, I, this is someone else has said this. So if you're quoting me on this, know that I got this from a book. I wish I could remember who the author is. Um, but he said that everyone comes out of the womb looking for someone who's looking for them. Come on. Everyone comes out of the womb looking for someone who's looking for them. So to be seen, to know that I'm safe, to know that I belong, and then this other thing I asked the Lord, he said, they also want to know they want to contribute, that they have value, that they can add something, that they have purpose. They want to belong, to be seen, to be safe, and that they can contribute something back, that they have something to give back to the world. Come on. Okay, so remember that. You've got to remember this is their deepest desires that within them at a 14-year-old place. And if we're really honest, that's kind of our deep, we're all 14 too. Amen. Can I get an amen? We're all still 14. At the base of my desires that quarrel among me, I want to be seen, to belong, to know I'm safe, and to know that I have some value to give the world. Uh, it doesn't change. Okay, so that's a sobering thought. Now, let's flip this. As a mom, as a mom, what do we desire for our daughters? And some of you already put some of, the, of those things down. I wrote that we don't want them to struggle. <laughs> Come on. We don't want them to hurt. Right? We want them to have a good life. We want them to be happy, which is really, that's that blanket statement to saying we just don't want them to hurt. We don't want them to hurt. We don't want them to have to suffer the same things that we have suffered. But here's the truth behind it. These are our desires, right? So these are, these are, God goes, those are great desires. I want those same things for your 14 year old daughter too. Cause she's my daughter. <laughs> I want those too. And she's going to need me. She's going to need me. I'm part of, I am her story. I'm writing the story. So you mama are the conduit for love, safety, and support. Okay, so back to the mom who gives this sense as Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or get a gym membership. They're secondary. Unless this base support is there of you're enough for me as you are. You're an amazing kid. And if we're not at, you know, remember they want to know that they can contribute. So we as parents, it's our role to contribute to them every day that we are pushing into them, that we're telling them the gold that we see, that we're showing and reminding that their value is not in what size jeans they wear, that no matter what they do, change the color of their hair, whatever, it's all for fun, but it will never change the value and the, the, con the contribution they are as a gift to the world of the gifts inside of them. That we are taking our eyes. Now remember, if we can't do this, it's because we're continually living in a fear pattern, which is from our own woundedness, our own war within us. Because at the end of it, this mom really just wants her daughter not to hurt. But we got to get sober about our own hurt. We have to heal from our fears, our worries, which really all comes from not trusting God. That is the bottom line. When I, can, when I say things to my daughter to, that... Don't add to the value. They're actually me trying to construct a behavior modification program, which I'm really good at. Um, all I'm doing is covering up the true, the thing that I fear the most, that I, that I don't want to repeat the pattern for her. And I'm not trusting God. So God is continually, this is why. It starts with us, mamas. We let, let's, you want to start loving your daughter well? Here's how, here, it starts with us. Start with yourself. Stop looking at her. Stop trying to fix her. Stop trying to tell her she needs this program or that program. Or, hey, second, you got to get honest. Are you stepping on and off the scale? Do these things matter to you? Does beauty come to you in a size? 
because that that you got it if that's true for you and if you feel like that's a real value and world for you then that's then we're we're talking a different language um not to say you can't do that but it will hurt her it will hurt her she'll lack she'll lack the deep places of resources and wealth and value in her soul she might have a good plan for how to not age how to anti-aging creams and <laughs> not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with it. Listen, mama likes a good face mask every now and then, but it's not defining me. It is not the thing. So I got to be real about what defines me because I'm setting the mark. I'm setting the temperature in my home. They're breathing the air of it, but we can do the healing work in us. And as we're doing the healing work in us, the Holy Spirit will start doing the healing work in them. It will turn. It turns faster than you think. I believe God knows that we're living under such a time of stress, kind of the duress of all this, you know, that he's merciful towards us. So he's going to move fast because he knows this is a world moving fast. Amen. Can I get an amen? I need someone to agree with this because the world is moving so fast and hard and messages and, da, 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 and Lord's like, oh, I'll trump that 10 X. You need hyperspeed on this? Let's do it. He's just as excited and anxious to heal you so we can get to your daughter, get to your granddaughter, your granddaughter's granddaughter, and on and on and on. But we got to get real about ourselves. Love, love, love. We are hard on others because we're hard on ourselves. So when you put an expectation on your daughter, to do this or to be that, or even just to hope that she would, that's still something in you that has this longing and hope for you and where we got to trust God. We got to turn it over and trust God and not just trust him like, God, we trust you, but we have to call on the scripture that says, God, your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I'm trying to figure out why she's not losing weight. Why this, why, right? Because we can set up all the structure of safety in our home so that she might, quote unquote, lose some weight. But what if she's not? <laughs> what if in the end, the Lord's saying, would you just help her lose weight in her heart? Love her. Love her. And if you can't love her, you have forgotten who you are. Come back to me. Come get your identity as a daughter. And then you can go love her as a daughter. I'm just a daughter loving another daughter. That's all I'm doing. Not perfectly. But I know any other type of mother to daughter relationship where I'm the superior fails. So you have to remember this as you come. Now, listen, here's what I'm saying. You got young kids at home. You got young girls at home. Yes, please set up a healthy environment for them. Um, don't let your daughter see you stepping on and off a scale. They pay attention at early ages to, oh, what's that machine? Mommy steps on it. I step on it. And then, so you got to break some of these patterns that they're watching. But beyond that, do some also healthy, create a healthy environment for them. Fruits, vegetables, all these things. The things I've never done is close down my kids, say, you can't have that, you can't have that. Um, I try to let it be there so they have to learn how to navigate these, these um, things for their health and their well-being. I've always told my daughter, you know, it's funny, my daughter's 14. And if I mention something like, hey, Sophia, you got to ease up on the sugar, she immediately goes, you think I'm fat? Like in her mind, that's what, so hear me, right? Like, hello, I'm Elisa Keaton. Do you not know that this is the last thing I would say to you? But she still hears it as because I told her to stop, ease up on the sugar, that must mean I'm fat. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I, this has nothing to do with your body shape. It is amazing. It is strong. But I do know what this, the addictive pattern of sugar and sugar and how it clouds your brain and it makes you kind of cranky. And like there's, there's these things. So we're, I'm not saying neglect these practical things that we can do. Please do that. But that's secondary. That's a shadow to me telling her how amazing she is and the good things that I see in her. Adding value, safety, belonging, and that she's seen over and over and over. So practice good common sense create that environment when they're young but at some point hear me now it's this is this is a pivot point and i'm going to wrap it up at some point around the age of 11 middle school middle school let's say a prayer now for all the middle school kids all the oh all the middle school kids especially the daughters i think it's just dang it it's rough <laughs> um 
But right around middle school, things flip. And it is now not so much as you have a child that you are raising to be compliant because they're finding ways that they don't have to be compliant. They're figuring out the system. They're figuring out, hey, I think I can do a little bit of this and do a little bit of that. And, you know, when they're young, they tend to want to please mama. They want to please papa. They'll do those things. But again, that's just the law. Like they're just trying to live by the law. But eventually we know that. It says in 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 6, not the... Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, the letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. That's what I'm saying. All these things, at some point, our kids outgrow that letter of the law. They outgrow it because it it can't satisfy. And they start to have these desires where they kind of figure out how to do it. And they're either in step with the spirit, right? Letting the spirit kind of help them keep in step with their desires because they are real living active beings. They're not just robots that we law, the law, behavior modification all works on a formula. (laughs) We program things. That's not how the heart really works. The heart is a spiritual matter and the desires of the heart start to happen. And somewhere around middle school, they learn, well, I can kind of make these things happen this way. Deception starts to show up. So you have to make a choice. Do, would I rather my child be compliant? Do what I say. Just eat fewer calories, move your body, right? Because we can program our kids into weight loss or we can program our kids into this is how you live a healthy life. This is how you succeed, right? We're, and we want to do that because it feels like loving them. But they're their own person. They are their own person and they have to walk their own walk and they have to be their own body shape and they have to have their own genetic code. So the spirit gives life. So would we rather them be compliant, which is follow the rules, or honest? Mm. That's that's a moment. And right around middle school, it starts to flip where you've just got to go. And I had to say that prayer to the Lord. Lord, I'd rather my kid be honest with me that they feel safe enough to come to me with anything safe. Now, it doesn't mean I don't still be a mom, but I'm not quick to fix it. I don't try it. I want to listen to them. I want to hear their desire. I want to calm the war that's within them. I don't want to fuel it. And so in that place of, of honesty, we have relationship. And that's where I have to turn them over and trust. I, can, I get to share. I've earned their trust. At some point, I can often say, when, when Sophia, I love it. The other day I was at, when we were at instructor training retreat, Sophia uh, texted me. I hadn't talked to her in a few days. And she was coming up to meet me at instructor training retreat, which was her first time doing that. Um, and she sent me a text. And I screenshot it. And she just said, Mom, I can't wait to see you. I have so much to talk to you about. winning. (laughs) Oh, that's a win. (laughs) I have so much to talk to you about. Honest. So I'm a place that she can talk and I've had to learn to shut up. Shut up. (laughs) And that's hard for me. Look, I'm a teacher. (laughs) Instead of like coming right back whenever she'd share something that her desire, something that was happening, instead of me trying to teach her through it or coach her through it, I just had to listen. Just listen, let her know she's safe. Let her know I hear her. Let her know I see her. Let her know she belongs. And then at the right time, I'll say, would you, would you, would you like me to share with you what I think? And then she'll say, sometimes she'll go, no. I'll go, okay, cool. I'm so glad you told me. That's it. Or sometimes she's like, yes, I would like to hear what you think. And it's amazing. She actually is the best training ground for me. What I learn with her in relationship, it's like I'm rehabilitating my own 14-year-old self so now I can be a better spouse to my husband because that's a whole different relationship. (laughs) That's a whole different language that I'm learning to speak. But at least with her, there's redemption and there's reconciliation. So the question I would ask the mom because your mom desire, right? What do you? What do we want for our kids? We don't want them to struggle. But I also say, just as much as we would say, I want my kid to have a great life. I want my kid to have a great life. Amen. I have to ask you now, mom. In closing, 
How's your life? How's your life? The Spirit of God gives us life. If the Spirit of God is dead in you, if it hasn't been watered, that's why go do RevWell TV. Scroll down under this page right now. There's a free workout for you. Move your body. Hear some truth. Get your life going again. And it's a life that says, I trust God. I want relationship. I'd rather have relationship than be right. I'd rather have relationship with my daughter than force her to look a way I need her to look so she won't hurt. This is God's story. She might have to gain 100 pounds. I don't know. Well, let me restate that. Nobody has to gain 100 pounds. But if whatever war is within her needs to be waged, it has to be waged. But you, mama, you can take a violent stand against the war that is within her by continually pulling down thanksgiving, praise, belonging for her, love for her, how beautiful. It will turn around. It might take some time. And in that time of waiting, you're being refined. You're, you're getting the heart of Christ because God is patient that no one would perish. Ah, the patience thing. Amen? Gets me every time. So mom, how's your life? If you're like, you know what? I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm worried. I'm scared. I feel fat. I feel forgotten. I feel... Start there. Do the work. Sit down. Begin. Go do a be still and be loved. Go do a be still. Go move your body. Listen to a podcast. Go do the free work. Listen, I'm like always making it rain around here, giving you guys stuff to get the resources of heaven in you so that we can get the hell out of you, the war that rages against you, because God is going to win this thing. I am cheering him on. I'm for you. We're for you. Mamas, you are powerful people. Powerful. Fight the right fight. The enemy won't fight fair. But we have a God who is mighty, mighty, mighty to save. Say that. He is mighty to save. He's going to save it all. He's going to do it all. Just be patient. Keep moving your body. Keep praising. Keep praying. Keep being still. Keep resting. It's a violent thing that you can rest and wait for God to do what he said he will do. He's going to do it. So mom, how's your life? Get present. Moms, you got to start feeling what you feel and knowing what you know. It's your stuff. If you're feeling distance and pull from your daughter, they're going silent on you, get present. What's going on you? Get in his presence is my next assignment to you, moms. Get in his presence. Sit down, put some worship music on, open the Bible, whatever you got to do. The world is not going to create this presence for you. You got to go get it. Get present. Get in his presence. And then finally, you're going to have to, in the end, you got to trust God with the gift of you and the gift of your daughter. Trust him with the present. Trust him with you. Trust him with her because you're not going to be able to make the cords fit. You know, the plugs aren't always going to fit. Daughter needs to lose 20 pounds. Plug in Jenny Craig. Mm. (laughs) That's the letter of the law that kills. It's the spirit that gives life. All right. Can I pray for us, mamas? We pray. Let's do this. This is generational changing. This is why I say all of you guys running on mission with us. Thank you, partners, donors. This is how we're breaking generational chains of physical and spiritual poverty. Everyone say this, not on my watch. (laughs) Not on my watch. No more. The enemy is the enemy. We're going to win this. The spirit that gives life, peace, righteousness, joy, love. All right, Lord, thank you so much, God. Thank you for this time. Thank you that we could come together through Facebook Live and through the podcast, Lord. And um, man, Lord, you're just loving us back. You're restoring us back to our original design, to the way things would and should have been, Lord. But you also are using the very thing that has tried to destroy us to become the thing that we use, God, to destroy hell. I thank you, God, that you've called us to a high call, that you tell us that we would do even greater things than Christ himself, Lord. I thank you for the gift of the word that renews our mind and heals our broken hearts, which in turn heals our physical body. So, Lord, I ask for signs, wonders. I want you to touch people in this. I want there to be renewal in home and marriages, relationships, sons and daughters, all of us as sons and daughters again, God. Restore to us the joy of our salvation. 
peace, supernatural, abundant peace in our homes. I speak peace over relationships of mothers and daughters, Lord. For those that can turn the tides, today is the day, not on their watch, no more. The enemy, you have been exposed, you have been put to open shame, and you must go to wherever Jesus sends you right now in his mighty name. We thank you, God. Thank you for a, a fresh breath of air today, repentance, restoration. Thank you that you're doing all the heavy lifting, and we'll just sing you. We will whistle while you work, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I, um, I really should have my glasses because I would be able to read your comments, but <laughs> I'm grateful that you guys took some time to hang out with me today. It went a little bit longer than I thought because, like I said, this one pulled on, this is the cords of my heart because I'm walking this out right now. This is my home with my daughter. I'm so grateful that I have her to, to practice with. Remember that. Remember, your team is chosen for your family's chosen for they're your teammates they're the ones they play different positions but when you all play well together it's good okay all right resources all on this page go do the workout to go do the uh, workout we just did it's a live stream one it's a fabulous one anyone can do it um me, it's probably, it's high beginner and because there's some body weight stuff that happens in it, but it's really good. Um, if not, go to the website. We have all kinds of free workouts there and podcasts and all that. All right, you guys have a great day. I will see you later. Peace.